What's up, everybody? This is Jim from The Pain PT. Hope you guys are doing well today. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Again, if you want support, help, not sure if your condition is neuroplastic, what to do about it, need some coaching support, please reach out. This is why I put this stuff out here. For those of you that need further help, please reach out. I offer all these services, one-to-one -one and group, if you need it. Now, today's evidence of the week and you guys know I love to bring it to you because I like to legitimize what we're doing here, that there's actual research being done all around the world that is supporting this work, okay? The role of emotions in the influence, the prediction, the production, and the sustaining of chronic somatic symptoms in the body. So I'm gonna go over today with all of you three papers related to emotions, emotion regulation, and different types of things you'll see in the body, okay? Different types of symptoms, and you'll see it from three different perspectives in three different studies. So let's get to it here today, everybody. The first paper I wanna to bring to you guys today is a 2023 review paper, systematic review. So again, looking at a lot of research, they looked at 2,800 articles, they, they narrowed it down to 38 articles, and the title of the paper is a systematic review of associations between emotion regulation, characteristics, and inflammation. So inflammation, there's one physical byproduct or physical output in the body that could occur from the way we deal with emotions. So I'm gonna share with you the data about this that's been pulled from over 2000 papers that have been done and, and whittled down to the top 40 or so, okay? And the evidence suggests that, uh, you know, there is a relationship. So let's go through it. Let's get down to the results here. And because there's lots of different types of emotion regulation strategies, they broke out some of these and looked at some of them um, more specifically. And so I can share some of that data with you here in the discussion. Um, what they found specifically, and here's a big takeaway, is that 74% of these studies, okay, of all the studies I mentioned, 74% of the studies found results consistent with the hypothesis that difficulty regulating emotion was associated with elevated inflammation in the body, whereas skillful emotion regulation was associated with lower inflammation. So I really wanna drive this home that the, the way you regulate emotions or how you deal with your emotions is really important. About 75% of these studies found uh, results that show that when people had difficulty regulating their emotions, they had more or worse physical inflammation, inflammatory mediators in their body. And that can show up in a very physical way through what symptoms, right? So they found here that people with higher emotional affectivity um, or reactivity, so they react more emotionally or often. There, that was also that was associated with elevated levels of inflammation, inflammatory proteins in eight of the 10 studies reviewed. So that's pretty significant there. Okay, they also found here of the articles testing associations between tendencies to suppress versus express emotions and inflammatory proteins that five of the seven studies supported the hypothesis that suppressing emotions would be related to elevated inflammatory biology in the body. So I wanna pause for a minute and have this sink into your brain that the way we deal with these emotions, either having a lot of emotional reactivity or suppressing our emotions is linked with increased physical inflammation inside the body. Okay, so this is the connection between emotion and physical symptoms. So there's a direct connection here. So we suppress emotion. It would make sense logically on the, on the surface as well. Like we hold back our emotions, we repress them, we hide them. Yeah, it would probably have a greater effect in the body. It's gonna come out physically in some way. So it can come out through inflammation. And again, out of the seven studies they, they looked at, five of them supported that. And again, same thing with um, the idea of having higher emotional reactivity. Eight out of the 10 studies showed higher levels of inflammation. Okay, so these are two, and I'm just gonna highlight those there. Those are two of the sort of negative emotional um, categories we can look at there. 
um, where you can see an effect. And they found, again, almost 70, 74%, okay, uh, people with difficulty regulating emotions had increased inflammation in the body. Okay, so that's one paper from 2023 I wanted to show you about the relationship between emotions and inflammation. Now we're going to move to another paper here that looked at the relationship between emotion regulation and pain-related outcomes. Okay, so we're going to move from inflammation to pain. So another type of um, body type uh, symptom or uh, expression or outcome related to emotions. And this was a large online study, okay, where they looked at a 14, uh, 1,453 people, adults who had chronic pain, okay, and they wanted to look at the emotion regulation skills to see which, what influence it had on the pain severity and pain interference three months follow-up, okay. And so what they found here was that uh, alexithymia, right? I mentioned to you before alexithymia, that's another thing we can think about with emotions. Alexithymia is, is difficulty knowing what you're feeling, identifying what you're, you're feeling uh, emotionally in that stage of what am I feeling? That, that emerged as a significant predictor of pain severity and pain interference, okay? And it said their findings highlight the value of considering the role of general emotion regulation particularly identifying and describing emotions and understanding the risk for poor pain-related outcomes. So I talk a lot about that with affect labeling or being able to recognize, identify, discern, what are you feeling? Like, like I talk a lot about that. What emotions are you feeling? Especially when you're having symptoms in your body. What emotions are, are causing the symptoms? What are you feeling emotionally? Because it's likely related to the symptom or is, is the symptom when it's not a structural, physical symptom, meaning something's wrong in your body, okay? But if you have alexithymia, you're gonna have difficulty knowing what that is and what, what emotion you're feeling. It's a very real thing. I'll talk more about it. It's in about 50% of or more of people who have chronic pain, okay? And they go on to say here down um, in the uh, discussion part of the paper here, that this greater alexithymia, uh, difficulty identifying and describing one's emotions, emerged as a statistically significant predictor of pain-related outcomes. Okay, so it's, uh, they also mentioned above and beyond like catastrophizing and, and, and things like that, this emerged as alexithymia was very, very significant. All right, and alexithymia they say here relates to the difficulties with the first stage of emotion regulation. So there's different stages of regulating your emotions. The first one is emotion identification. Like, what am I feeling, right? It, it, it's really helpful to know what you're feeling emotionally. Okay, so people with chronic pain, like they mentioned here, uh, versus people without chronic pain report higher levels of alexithymia. And in other studies, alexithymia is related to higher pain severity and pain interference, greater depression and anxiety. So this, this inability to know what you're feeling emotionally not only leads to worse pain outcomes, chronic pain outcomes, it actually leads to increased depression and anxiety. Now again, depression and anxiety, those aren't, they're emotional states, correct? Yes, but they're not telling you what you're feeling. So we wanna get more specific in the emotion, it's called motion granularity if we can. So I'm highlighting this today that uh, things such as suppressing our emotions, you saw in the first study, or having large emotional reactivity, that was related to greater inflammation in the body. And you're seeing in the second study, something like alexithymia, which is also related to your emotions, the difficulty identifying what you're feeling was also significantly related to chronic pain and worse pain three months later, okay? It's also related to depression and anxiety. Okay, other studies also, like they mentioned, have found that alexithymia predicts poor pain-related outcomes. So it's something we want to work with, right? This is about emotions, again, everybody, that we, we get into working with our emotions more when we are talking about things like chronic pain, inflammatory conditions in the body. And finally, I'm going to go through the third paper here because I want to give you a broad overview of different types of physical outputs, inflammation, chronic pain. And finally, this third paper here was in May of 2016, it was released. It was titled Emotional Suppression in Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. 
Okay, so now we're going to go to another condition. And by the way, there's more papers than this. I'm only sharing three today that go into other types of conditions. So it, to me, the condition that you have that's chronic is not as important as the cause, okay? Because the output could be all over the body physically, but the causes emotionally can be existing for all these different conditions. So that's why I'm highlighting, highlighting these different ones. So chronic fatigue. Some of you may have chronic fatigue. Some of you may have chronic pain. Some of you may have inflammatory. There's evidence supporting autoimmune as well. Go over that another day. But this particular study uh, looked at emotional processing differences in, in 80 adults with chronic fatigue syndrome and in 80 healthy controls. Okay, and they were watching a distressing film clip. Uh, half of the group was instructed to suppress their emotions and half were told to express their feelings as they wished. And the reactions they had were filmed and rated by uh, independent observers. They also measured what's called electrodermal skin conductance response, okay? And this is one way to measure your autonomic nervous system and sympathetic arousal, so sympathetic nervous system arousal. Remember, emotions create sympathetic nervous system arousal at times, and so they can measure this here. And what they found here was that the CFS patients, the chronic fatigue patients, reported higher anxiety and sadness than the healthy controls, both before and after the film. But the observers rated that the chronic fatigue group had lower emotional expression than the healthy controls. So they're having um, stronger emotional responses, but they were having a lower emotional expression in the healthy controls, both in the emotional suppression group and the expression group. Now what emerged here, which is very interesting, is another component to your emotions and regulating your emotions is these beliefs about, they mentioned here the beliefs about the unacceptability of negative emotions was associated with greater self-reported suppression. Now again, this is important for some of you. For some of you who've grown up and learned from your parents or from your environment that, look, these emotions aren't good. I shouldn't express them. I, I don't think they're correct. I, I'm a bad person if I feel angry. I shouldn't have these certain emotions. Um, if I have negative beliefs about my emotions, that's going to lead to greater suppression of those emotions. That makes sense, right? And that's what they're mentioning here. They also found that the electrodermal responses, the skin conduction responses were greater in the chronic fatigue group than the healthy control group. And this is really important, everybody, the higher skin conductant responses, which were indicative of the sympathetic nervous system activity, was associated with larger post-task increases in fatigue in the chronic fatigue group, but not in the healthy controls. So what we can see here again is how the way we deal with emotions literally showing up in the body through the skin conductance test, which is indicative of the autonomic nervous system, and directly affecting the fatigue. So now we have a connection here that I keep saying between emotions and a symptom, in this case, fatigue. How suppressing emotion led to a greater reactivity in the autonomic nervous system and directly increased the fatigue. So there you go. You see a connection between how you deal with your emotions and then the symptom actually getting worse. Okay, for those of you who don't believe that, this is good to hear the evidence, right? So we, we have to see how these um, emotions and the way we deal with emotions have direct impacts on the physiology in the body. In, in this case, inflammation, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and how it actually can make these physical symptoms worse, okay? And the way we deal with emotions and how we deal with emotions. And I highlighted today some different types of emotion regulation strategies. And some of these were maladaptive ones that we, either we've learned or we have learned to use. And three of them that you saw today was one, high emotional reactivity. So getting emotionally worked up, reactive, yes, more inflammation in the body. Um, suppressing these emotions, uh, tendency to hold in or hide your emotional feelings. You saw that increased inflammation. Uh, you saw that increased fatigue and, and reactivity in the autonomic nervous system. You also saw that alexithymia, which I'll talk about another time because it has a ton of data behind it, 
emerged as a significant predictor of greater pain disability, greater pain intensity, and the people in the chronic pain group. And that's that ability to identify what you're feeling emotionally, to connect to the emotion, to know what you're feeling. So all this about emotions, everybody, I keep bringing you back to emotions because they're super important. And again, a lot of people don't know this, understand this, or believe this. So I share this evidence with you to help you understand this. Please share it with other people because it's not out there. Your doctor's not going to tell you this. You're not going to hear it from many people. I hope you enjoy this. Again, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Spread the word. If you need help in working with your emotions or learning how to work with your emotions, regulating your emotions, identifying your emotions, please reach out. That's what I do here. Uh, my work is it's fairly emotion focused when I work with people. So reach out if you need more help. You can go to thepainpt.com and we'll see you guys later. Take care now. Bye-bye.